Someone who had interviewed a lot of very old people said one way to get them talking isn't to ask them about the past, but to ask them what they're planning to do tomorrow. Patrick Murphy tonight visits a man who has lived more than a century, and tomorrow he'll probably be back at work. Isidore Irwin Millstone graduated from Washington University in 1927 with a degree in engineering. Over the following 80 years, he built many of the structures that define the St. Louis skyline. At 101 years old, he still reports to the office every day. He is one of St. Louis's leading philanthropists and an icon of St. Louis's Jewish community. It has truly been a remarkable life, rich in experience and memories. By the time I started kindergarten in 1912, when I was five at Clark School, I was already pretty aware of what was going on. I remember my uh, photograph being taken. Somebody came around the na neighborhood on a donkey to take pictures. King's Highway had, had, was just being paved. It had been a dirt street. Uh, the fire station was across the street, all with big ho horses and I'd watch going out. Right next door to the fire station was Harrigan and Sheehan's livery station and everybody would go there to get their horses uh, uh, taken care of or their buggies, whatever it would be. And the only way you got anywhere was on a streetcar or walk. And streetcars were great, you could go anywhere. Those were early experiences. Millstone's career as a contractor spans the era of mules and picks to the present day. Back in the early, well, late 20s, early 30s, they did our excavation with mules. We just started to make our own construction equipment. We started to make it, uh, and uh, some of the equipment was so bad to begin, we were afraid to use it. By the, this time, the Depression was on now, and Roosevelt was elected in 32, and now they were trying to make work like PWA and WPA and CCC. And if you look in our book, you'll see a lot of our early jobs were those kind of jobs. Uh, so we did a lot of that. His company, Millstone Bangert, along with Fred Weber Construction, built much of the region's interstate highway system. We had built a section called Red Feather, which was down near uh, Kings Highway, Vanda Vetter, there between two high retaining walls. Then they let some other sections, not part of the federal highway system, not connected to go through at different points farther west. So now when they started the federal system, we interconnected them all. Uh, but that was all done to eventually interconnect, and that's why it winds around and goes through residential areas. And today, Millstone Bangert, under the leadership of his grandson Tom Kuhn, together with Fred Weber and Granite Construction from California, is rebuilding the original Highway 40. And then after we, were, we had started that, then we also started north and south. We then started 270 and all, which went across cornfields and through a uh, two, three, four hundred foot rock uh, hill. The highways that Millstone and Weber constructed would change the face of our region, as well as where and how many of us would live in the post-war era. Because the minute that we started to build the roads, then all the realtors and ever start coming around looking for spots. Hey, we're going to build a shopping center. We want to build a, a subdivision. Uh, they were looking for places, you know, to, to expand real estate and all. And they had to go where the roads were. In the post-war years, Millstone's reputation spread far beyond St. Louis bringing him in contact with the leaders of the newly created State of Israel. Millstone's parents, Louis and Mary, raised their children as Reformed Jews, and growing up, I.E. never considered himself to be particularly religiously observant. But his father-in-law, Louis Gollin, was an ardent Zionist, and in the 1930s convinced I.E. of the need for a Jewish state. Today, Millstone recalls how in 1948, Israel's first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, asked him to come to Israel and provide housing for the thousands of people emigrating from war-torn Europe and the Arab world. Ben-Gurion said, 
We need help. The people are coming in on boats, and we've got no place to put them. And all. And we hear that you are a housing expert. You build a lot of houses, and so we want you to come. We want you to come here and help us and bring uh, some experts with you. I got Lou Kahn, the architect, who was uh, wasn't so famous then. He became famous. First of all, we didn't want any prefabs at all, because as, as they say, there's nothing as permanent as a temporary house. And here is this beautiful potential country. Nothing there at the time at all. But Millstone, with his long history of working with reinforced concrete, knew that Israel had all of the basic materials needed to build houses and roads. There's nothing there but uh, sand and, and rock, uh, not even much water. I said, you've got everything you need. You've got everything you need, and we will build an industry, and we did. And though I.E. Millstone has spent his life looking toward the future, today he allows himself some reflection on his long and rich life. I don't want to be morbid about it, but I know I won't be here much longer. So I realize that it is that I am privileged, let's call it, or unusual, you want to call it, I'm aware of that. And uh, I'm not dead yet. As they say, use it or lose it, as you know, whatever it would be. So basically, uh, I stay active and I don't think I've lost it, really, you know. And an awful lot of people want to talk to me about things that are history to them, but are important to them. And it's history to them, but it's your life. It's my life, whatever it would be.